Hello everyone, today I'm going to be watching Kenshi review SSS rank smuggling and starvation slavery. Both uh, three of them are trademarked by Seth Zintak. But yeah, let's check it out in the kind of three, two, one, go. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering an educational game about the harsh realities of post-apocalyptic society. A game what where you can this? be anything you want to be, do anything you want to do, as long as all the things you want to do are extremely illegal, morally dubious, and outright sadistic. A game where everything wants to either eat you, cook you, suck out your organs, or peel off your skin and use it as a rug. A game where being forced into slavery is considered a good outcome compared to having your arms and legs eaten off by a pack of giraffes. I'm talking, of course, about Kenshi. Kenshi takes place in a world that has been plunged into a technological dark age after an unknown disaster annihilated modern society. And now, everyone's okay, back to using okay. straw hats and I'm katanas. back. I'm back into consciousness. After an unknown disaster annihilated modern society. And now, everyone's back to using straw hats and katanas. Kenshi is actually the canonical sequel to Battle Realm. Two Many moons. theorize how feudal China ended up looking like this, but the popular opinion is that after endless droughts and famine, the lack of easily available rice and water, which are the two elements needed to form a Chinaman, <laughs> led to an Oh my god! <laughs> uncontrolled period of rapid population decline. Seeing that China was at its weakest, the Australians invaded, and the rest is history. Kenji plays like some strange okay. hybrid of Mountain Blade, Jagged Alliance, and Death Jam fight for New York. After about 10 artists- I have no idea what any of those games are. One of them I know. Years of development, it's finally here, featuring drug trafficking, human trafficking, and giant enemy crabs. Kenji, it's got it all. Okay, what's up with Asian culture and giant stuff. Because uh, Earth Defense Force EDF EDF had the same uh, like technical like thing, you know. And there is a big dinosaur game coming. That dinosaurs are coming from portals, and people need to kill. What the fuck is with that? Why do people love giant stuff in there? Like Attack on Titan. Like what the fuck is happening there? Why why people enjoy? It? Mm, because maybe the average uh, height in like Asian countries are quite short. Hmm. That might, that might be the reason. To begin, you need to choose from one of 13 different starting scenarios. You can start as anything from a nameless vagabond, a trader with connections and money to spare, or even a guy who's hit rock bottom. No money, no food, and oh, no masturbation. The fuck. character you start with can be fully customized. They can be fucking like... Armless and shit? What the fuck? Naked dude. <laughs> no food and no masturbation. The character you start with can be fully customized. You can start as a human, a shek man, a bug man, or a skelly man, which all have their own respective perks and penalties. Humans are, of course, good at everything. But you know what they're not good at? Surviving acid rain, or swimming in acid, or getting too close to one of these. Bug men are exceptional at losing limbs and slavery. Are they good at capturing slaves? No, they're good at being slaves. Slaves. Checks are good at fighting. <laughs> What's the point? Then? They're not good at reasoning, critical thinking, and having any. Oh my god, look at those penalties. Holy sh robotics! So you can make fucking like turrets and shit. Long-term planning. Skelly men are better at everything, which is why everyone's afraid of them. They're also probably responsible at everything, which is why the little boy that got dismembered by a skeleton. Oh my god! The best, what? The best selling children books today? What the fuck? What about the Skeletor, the giant dog or something? Why? Everyone's afraid of them. They're also probably responsible for destroying the world. Being perfect comes at a so price. So they're Australian? You can't heal. You need repairs instead. And good luck finding a mechanic in a desert. However, the character you start with isn't special. They've got stats and skills like everyone else. They can also permanently die like everyone else. A game of Kenshi only truly ends when all of your characters are six feet under. There's no <laughs> real objective oh, in Kenshi. That objective can be whatever you want it to be. Just like getting bullied in high school, the core philosophy of Kenshi <laughs> is get, just like getting- Seth is high school fifth grade. 
Yeah, my bitch I was there. Bullied in high school, when the I was in sixth grade. Of Kenji Holy is get shit. Your shit kicked in and get stronger, survive, and fight another day. Once you get into your first fight, you'll understand what I mean. Kenji uses a limb-based physics system to determine whether attacks actually connect, and you don't die outright. Usually, your limbs suffer too much damage, forcing you to crawl on the ground or fight with a broken arm as your broken appendages flail around helplessly. If you spill out too much blood or intestines, you'll collapse unconscious instead. You can still wake up from a trauma and bandage yourself to get- This- this sounds like a more horrible and painfully tedious version of Arma with Ace Medical in it that you just need to wait to die and bullshit like that. What the fuck? Don't they have Rocky Remaster version or like a version that is not atrocious looking yeah, at this? Or rely on the help of allies to pop your bones back in place and carry you to relative safety. However, Ooh. take too much damage in a short span of time and you might permanently lose an arm or a leg. If that happens, you can install prosthetic limbs, but having uh, a bucket instead of a foot okay. isn't exactly ideal, so hold on to those. But if your organs take too much damage, don't worry about prosthetics because you're already fucking dead. All that's left is to strip you down and chuck <laughs> you in the furnace because oh my God. Is a far safer solution than letting your corpse fume up and attract the bone dogs. Remember I said combat uses physics? Because understanding that is extremely important. Characters make different swings and motions with different weapons, which also change as you get more experienced. If a swing physically connects with an enemy, it counts as a hit. Not only that, if there were, let's say, three enemies standing closely packed together, they'll all get- To be fair, okay, if you look at that, his hands, that looks fucking amazing. That's not revolutionary. Like, seriously, like, for honor and bullshit, like, that. Motions with different weapons, which also change as you get Look, more experience. Look at that if a shit. swing physically connects with an enemy, it counts as a hit. Not only that, if there were, let's say, three enemies standing closely packed together, they'll all get cut by the same swing. Basically, I'm telling you that if you want to die very quickly, gang up on an enemy, because that's a great idea. He'll take a single broad horizontal swing and decapitate your entire oh, team. It's better to have characters do each though. enemy or try and overwhelm Mommy? them with a variety of attacks. You can even do some crazy micro and make your characters manually evade attacks while everyone else flanks them from the side. Combat is really fucking good. It's responsive and only gets more entertaining as you get the hang of it. In the beginning, you're nothing but a walking sack of rice wheat. <laughs> By the end, you're still a walking sack of rice wheat, but hey, you can stage dive leviathans like a baller. But combat's only one of many- <laughs> Like he's wheat, but hey, so you dead can though. stage dive leviathans like a baller, but combat's Zip and only zoo. one of many things you do in Kenshi. It's a means to an end, and achieving any of your goals requires money. Money buys you food, equipment, protection, and companions. You can't get anywhere without it, but you can't get it anywhere for free. To make money, we need to explore, see beautiful and bizarre places with our own sets of risks and challenges, such as dust storms, gas clouds, See beautiful and bizarre places with our own sets of risks and challenges, such as Place the robots and then you have to fight them with swords. How the fuck yes, does that work? Do you have to get ranged weapons clouds, and stuff? Flesh eating cannibals, Jesus flesh -eating Christ. Spiders, lack of water, too much water, and this. I don't recommend stepping into one of these, but they can outrun any character. So the only real way of dodging them is by getting out of the way very quickly or by traveling at night. Luckily, they're not as dangerous once they fall out of the sky. Besides all the different places that can get you killed, there's a lot of interesting people to meet throughout the world. Hey, I think I Okay, I'm I was worried because whenever CSF like makes a video about a game, I basically need to go broke for a few days because I buy it and then I play it and I enjoy it. But this is something I probably won't buy because what the fuck is that? I've had enough of Kenshi for today. Actually, turns out they're completely friendly. They just Okay, by the way, that 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 Kenshi for today. <laughs> that shit happens all the time to me for every game. Whenever I close them normally, it, this this shit happens. That's why you basically press control shift and ESC and go to processes and end the game like a chat that you are, all right?
Actually, turns out they're completely friendly. They just need some help peeling potatoes. Unfortunately, it turned out I was the potato and my limbs had to be peeled off. Oh, I God. can conclusively say this is probably the most effective weight loss plan I've ever seen in my life. There's a lot of factions out there and most of them aren't skin bandits. And once you meet them, you'll realize they're even worse. You can interact with them, help them, and even pledge a lead. I can't even get my head wrapped around the fucking skin man, it's called the fucking what? to their cause or you can kidnap them and execute their Chat leaders forcing two. them to crumble and or the lack of leadership even better the resulting power vacuum leads to rival factions taking over and potentially okay. expanding okay. across the world Please, you can... lets you do that it even encourages you to do that sooner or later Ooh, your so nomadic you can fuck lifestyle with people of running from city to city will get old why pay for methanol poisoning when we can make our own why suffer the daily struggle when we can grow our own weed and all right process it <laughs> all right soft, there we go mounds of hash Ooh. which will smuggle into the Ooh, united butter. states using Holy amazon shit. prime here's hobbs demonstrating our one day prime delivery option he's currently sneaking past the border at a comfortable land speed of 26 <laughs> miles per hour the guards <laughs> don't even see him <laughs> That's brilliant. They do. They'll pretend they didn't. Intimidated Jeffrey by Bezos. the man Naruto running through their gates with over 50 kilos of solid hash on his back. As you've probably figured out, you can make your own outpost. At the start, it won't be anything special and you'll be barely scraping by to survive. But once you get some research and technology going, you'll be on your way to establishing a thriving city. Provided you don't get murdered, robbed, or eaten while doing so. Setting up an outpost changes the game completely. You now have a place to live but everyone wants to take what they can't have and they will unless your defenses hold up each region has its own set of wildlife and factions that will try and ruin your day in my case i set up in the desert the soil sucked the crops didn't grow but at least i was only under attack every day by four different factions starving bandits kept coming to then what was the point of making what the crops didn't grow but at least i was only under attack every day by God four damn different it. factions starving bandits kept coming to beg for food they got a free bolt in the mouth instead the dust bandits just wanted to kill us at least they were honest about it the shacks kept asking for a good clean fight so i walled myself off and turned them into pink <laughs> the black dragon ninjas. nice black dragon ninjas can go fuck themselves we're suffering our second famine this season and it's all because a pack of weeaboos with tin hats keep dabbing fuck away em. with our fuck bread em. baskets and you know what the raids aren't even the worst part it was sundays kenshi where every sunday is prayer day and you don't want to skip out on prayer day oh you missed your bible <laughs> don't worry this one's on me oh you can't make prayer day because you're in a coma from severe head are you kidding me i have to fucking pray in another game too i already am a muslim i don't need to pray oh come on man you're killing me Trauma? i literally do not give a shit i don't care if there's enemies bashing at your gates you raise those shits right now and i'm giving you to the count of five to come pray to our lord and savior okran if you don't come out right now <laughs> i'm gonna burn this place to the ground and kill every blasphemous pagan who takes the name of the lord in vain and we're gonna do this every sunday prayer day God is the best goddamn day unlike those lazy preachers in real life the holy nation priests will personally travel all the way to your base Seems together like it. with their faithful team of heavily armed paladins and i don't recommend making them upset if you can survive all of that having an outpost lets you really expand post-apocalypse inquisitions reigning in your base to pray every sunday like that's that's it what the fuck is that even what like these games that he kind of reviews in this manner are just so detailed and he doesn't fucking hold back either this looks insane on your options you can even assign people to tasks and functions using an automated job system and essentially sit back while they generate money and get stuck on terrain after securing a stable source of food you naturally want more people to eat it if that doesn't work buy yourself a couple of animals they'll eat through your survival rations in no time animals are a mixed blessing so i've arranged them in order of usefulness goats which are walking sacks of meat bone dogs which are the body cleanup crews of kenshi very cute 
believe, I recommend getting a pack of them just to watch them play fetch with each oh other. My There's God. also garus and Don't bulls, which are blocking sacks of storage space and absolutely essential for trading and carrying <laughs> all of your stolen ceramic bowls. <laughs> And absolutely essential for trading and Beef carrying boy. all of your stolen ceramic bowls. And finally, there's crabs, which are objectively the greatest animals for both land-based and naval combat. Oh, real funny, Seth. Now, show me a squad of them. I admit, I got really uncreative with naming them after the first dozen or Crabs in the net. <laughs> Good bud. So, you're not even limited to a single outpost. You can build an outpost wherever you want. Just be prepared for the consequences once other people start to take notice. From there, the world is your oyster, and it's waiting to be devoured by your legions of domesticated crustaceans. Your characters don't Trap even have to be what? in the same region as each other. The Very game keeps though. track of everything in real time, no matter where they are on the map. You can send squads and expeditions out into the wild, while your peasants work for their lives away in your sweatshops and you sort of have to as well you can't unlock any of the later research trees without plundering the remains of ancient civilization oh so you can finally harness the ancient secrets of eggplant hydroponics <laughs> Kenshin is a wonderful bizarre and at times absolutely brutal game with a completely unique setting it's an i got 99 percent brutality in that rather than what? Absolute joy to play, and I've greatly enjoyed watching my life spiral out of control oh as my I feed God, my newfound no. addiction. I, of course, give it the biggest score and my highest recommendation. I give it 250 stacks of wheat straw over the insane fucking attack range of blood spiders. Seriously, look at that shit. What? Luckily, you don't have to deal with it. Can't you? Some is fucking monkey king in Delta. And most of the issues you have in the game can be easily fixed through modding. I've attached Ooh. my mod list in the description below, and it should Near contain automata. the bare essentials to improve gameplay. <laughs> what is that kid doing? Come on, mate. Get out. That's okay. That's brilliant, like, though. Without significantly changing anything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of potatoes to peel, but don't worry, I've got a lot of free time. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. Also, earlier this month. Bro, what the f <laughs> Interesting mushroom photography, 84 than 100. 800. <laughs> That's so good. That's really good. Month, I made a shitty website introducing SeftScenetatch.com. It's hot garbage, but it's also got it links to all good. my videos, especially the banned ones. Come check it out. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. To be fair, his website looks better than half the governmental websites that we have to use every day for our cases and our fucking legal issues or to in put into taxes. Like, seriously, what the fuck? But yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, wait. There's so much. Wait. Wait a second. There's so much more. Let's see. Okay, this is basically, oh, oh my god, the amount of credits he gives to, I, I assume those are Patreons, is brilliant. But yeah, too many Patreons too, so the credit is given. The game, the game looks insanely brutal. But is there a way to play it single player? Because I, I don't have a good internet to play multiplayers anymore. Is it possible? Because I love things like Fallout, but uh, or Rust. This this was more like Rust and um, Corn and Exile. If you played that game, kind of like a combination of those. Because it literally it doesn't have a filter on it. It's just do whatever the fuck you want to do and do it with fucking pain involved. So is it? Is it only multiplayer? Is it like an MMO of some sort? Uh, let's see. What was the name of it? Um, it was... The, the Kenshi. Kenshi. Huh. When did it even came? It came in 2013. Not a while. I mean... The, the score is quite high. Holy shit, let me see the fucking esteem. Overwhelmingly positive. It is single player. 
okay okay i might give this a try how much is it yeah i'm too broke for that right now but hopefully a year from now i will be buying this and fucking enjoying it this looks amazing it's based on what he said fucking brutal but amazing at the same time oh my god you can you can change so many body features can you just be a torso can you be a torso and like just wiggle around and move like that hmm maybe hopefully I, I'm, I'm wishing for that shit but yeah for now if you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe uh, and see you later have a nice day